notice of a public meeting of the City Commission of the City of Brownsville pursuant to Chapter 551, Title 5 of the Texas Government Code, the Texas Open Meetings Act notice is hereby given to the City Commission of the City of Brownsville, Texas, in accordance with Article 5, Section 12 of the Charter said City, will convene an executive session and a regular meeting on Tuesday, April the 2nd, 2019 at 4.40 p.m. and at 6 p.m. in the Commission Chambers on the second floor of Brownsville City Hall, Old Federal Building located at 1001 East Elizabeth Street, Brownsville Cameron <coughs> County, Texas. We will begin with executive sessions. Executive session A, consultation with attorney pursuant to section 551.0712 of the Texas Government Code on a matter in which the duty of the attorney to the governmental body under the Texas Disciplinary Rules of Professional Conduct of the State Bar of Texas clearly conflicts with this chapter. Executive session B, Consultation with attorney pursuant to section 551.0712 of the Texas Government Code on a matter in which the duty of the attorney to the governmental body under the Texas Disciplinary Rules of Professional Conduct of the State Bar of Texas clearly conflicts with this chapter. Executive Session C, discussion pursuant to section 551.087 of the Texas Government Code regarding economic development. Executive Session D, Consultation with attorney pursuant to section 551.0712 of the Texas Government Code on a matter which the duty of the attorney to the governmental body under the Texas Disciplinary Rules of Professional Conduct of the State Bar of Texas clearly conflicts with this chapter. Mayor, I move we go into executive session. Second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. You've been busy. For the Pledge of Allegiance and the Invocation. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Honor the Texas flag. I pledge allegiance to the Texas, one state, under God, one and indivisible. Let's pray. Father God, we thank you for your love, your grace, and your mercy. We thank you for the many blessings we have in the city of Brownsville. And Lord, tonight we thank you for our mayor and commissioners and also for all the candidates that are running for office. We ask you to, during this election process, to give us the information we need, cause the voters to become informed, and cause each candidate to run their campaign in a way that will be good for the city of Brownsville and that will honor you, Lord God. In the name of Jesus Christ, amen. 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 Next, we have actions discussed in executive session. Action executive A, there is no action required. Act, action executive B, there is no action required. Action on executive C, consideration and possible action regarding economic development as discussed in executive session. I'd like to make a motion to approve based on the recommendation by city staff and management. Second. But you need to advise them to continue Oh, and I would like to advise management to continue discussions and negotiations. Second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. Next, we have action executive D, consideration and possible action to authorize the use of funding in case of an emergency. Motion to approve the use of emergency funds should it become necessary. I'll second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. Next, we have the mayor's activity report. Uh, just real briefly, uh, I would like to thank all the city uh, staff and all the people, all the departments, and all the wonderful volunteers who helped us out this, uh, this weekend with some of the issues regarding the migrant families, uh, the outpouring of, um, of your love, uh, the supplies that were provided, uh, the time that was spent, um, and the kindness that was shown uh, was immeasurable. So my thank you to uh, the entire city of Brownsville. Appreciate it. Next um, we have the commissioner's activity update. Just one thing to um, let folks know is to keep, because we won't have a meeting before it, um, at the National Trail Opening Day is coming up April the 13th. 
and we will have an event um, to celebrate National Trail Opening Day for the first time. We have we are already noted on the national website, so check out the um, Rails to Trails Conservancy Trail Opening Day website or the city website, uh, Parks Rec website. We will have three simultaneous rides or walks, actually three and a half, um, that will all converge that Saturday morning on Market Square to enjoy the unveiling of our first mural on the side of the San Fernando building. So please join us. Um, you can pick a short ride, a longer ride, or a longer ride um, according to your level of activity and enjoy the morning. Thank you, Commissioner. So just to make a quick update um, as far as District 2, but it's actually a citywide update. Um, with the recent rains that we've been having, a lot of our pothole patching has been washing out. Mm -hmm. And I have noticed a lot of um, very deep craters in some areas um, as I've been out and about. And I just want to remind the public that the number to call is 546-HELP. If you should have one in your neighborhood, have one on your way to work, please call 546-HELP to report it. We will be out there within a good 48 hours. And um, that concludes my report for today. Thank you, Commissioner. Appreciate Mayor, I wanted to take the opportunity to, my mother passed away last week, and I want to take the opportunity to thank uh, city management. Uh, we had to move to the Brownsville Event Center. We had too many people, so I want to thank their staff, the Brownsville Police Department. Chief, thank you to you and Commander Pascal and everybody that helped out. Thank you so very much in helping my family transition through this very difficult time. We thank you from the bottom of our hearts to all of you, and thank you for everything that you did for our families. Appreciate it. Thank you, Commissioner. Okay. Next, we have the city manager's update. Uh, good evening, Mayor, Commissioners. I'm, this is more of a public announcement. It should be. It's a big decision that I that was made and an appointment that was made last Friday. And I want to introduce briefly and have him say a few words. But Felix Salceda, Commander Salceda, <laughs> is the new chief of police, effective yesterday. And I'd like to invite him just to say a couple of words. Uh, he did go through a rigorous process. We had various panels. We had outside technical pan panels that were experts in, in the police industry. We had a community panel. We had director panels and also um, assessments that were based on his executive level and, and his psychometric uh, characteristics in terms of who he is as an individual. All that put together allowed me to make the best decision for the community and that was to select him because of his leadership, his character, his vision, his qualifications, and I am pleased to introduce him to the community as Chief of Police. Congratula congratulations. Thank you, Mayor, and thank you, Commissioners, each and every one of you all. I will work hard to make sure that our organization, um, we begin with a culture change from within the organization. That change in and of itself will lead us into a most effective uh, police organization, a modern day police organization, one that our citizens of Brunswick not only deserve, but expect. Um, we will work hard at making sure that we modernize, that we take care of our own, that we grow within our organization. We give them what it is that they need to uh, take on the, uh, on, on the very huge mandate that we have as police officers. We're, we're answering to a diverse uh, selection of calls that we, we inherit, um, everything from helping kids do their homework through our operators, <laughs> believe it or not, to uh, <laughs> cats on the tree and things like that, you know? So anyhow, I'm, I'm deeply humbled by my appointment. Um, I will make us proud. I will make each and every one of our officers something that everyone in as a community is proud of. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, one other update. We had the kickoff for the 2020 census. We had the one-year pre-anniversary yesterday at Market Square. That was very well attended. It was, uh, it's a big thing. Uh, various entities, Cameron County, Willacy County, City of Harlingen, and we were the lead entity. The logo for the City of Brownsville was introduced. The logo for the county was introduced but ultimately the importance was highlighted of how this is tied to our funding here at the city. Uh, finally, the city is involved with supporting local nonprofits as we assist the migrants that are currently transitioning to Brownsville. This is something that happened to us. We are working very closely with Customs and Border Protection. Uh, Mayor, you have, you have been on CNN, I have been on CNN, and really the message is 
the city has to be involved because of health, public safety, and just to do the right thing from a humanitarian side. Um, it is something that we're treading very carefully on on the cost side. I do want to mention to the community that we do have a responsibility in terms of being a safeguard and not allowing um, families to just roam the streets of Brownsville, but we also have to be careful in terms of how we assist. So at this time, the city of Brownsville is a supporter, is a facilitator, and we rely heavily on the nonprofits to do the brunt of the hands-on work. But we are involved and um, we will do the right thing, but we also will not make sure that we overly expose the city. Um, but we have to make sure that we take care of the 200,000 plus that approximately that live in Brownsville. Very good. Thank, thank you, uh, Noel. Uh, Next, we have a presentations, the Catalyst Commercial Retail Strategy. Good evening, Mayor and Commissioners. Um, I'd like to introduce Jason Klonsch. He is with um, Catalyst Commercial. And um, we, in our initiative to be more focused on economic development and retail development, which is so important not only for our general fund, but our type A, type B economic development budgets, we thought it would be important to help lead that initiative. Um, through that city. And so part of that, I've worked with J Mr. Conch. He has a really solid reputation in the sector um, and in not only Texas, but in the nation. And so I'd really like to go ahead and, and introduce you to him and the scope of work that he would be um, presenting for us. Thank you, Helen. Thank you. Appreciate it. Mayor, Council, uh, Helen, you can call me Jason anytime. Uh, hopefully we'll get to know each other on a first name basis. Uh, uh, we look forward in uh, working with uh, you on this endeavor, this journey. I think it's certainly an important one. Um, I'll give you a little bit of uh, history here in terms of our background in the region, uh, our approach and next steps. Um, we, uh, we do have a vast amount of experience in, in retail uh, recruitment uh, and regional uh, work, but we also have spent a lot of time doing other work, uh, downtown plans, corridor analysis, a lot of infrastructure projects, and so hopefully we'll be able to take uh, some of this broad experience and, and, uh, to your benefit. Um, we are going to uh, work in conjunction with some of your downtown efforts. I understand there's some work underway, so we look forward to, to uh, dovetailing uh, our work into that work uh, to leverage that. Uh, we'll be working here, obviously, on the retail market analysis and, and any retail recruitment needed uh, in the future. Um, we've got a robust team. Um, I'll be leading as a project manager um, personally. Uh, we've got a recruiter. Uh, also on our team, and then uh, we've already been engaged with your staff that's been very helpful in terms of the GIS um, and infrastructure in terms of the overall project. As part of our work, uh, we'll be working on the market analysis, be working on uh, trade area analysis, demand analysis, retail merchandising, uh, implementation and activation. Uh, those are sort of the steps of the process, but our real goal is to tie the land use strategy with an economic development policy. I think that's the important thing. Uh, I do want to recognize uh, Verdunity. Uh, I understand they're here tonight. Uh, we've got uh, a vast experience working with them, so we want to make sure that our work uh, supports the, their initiative. And ultimately, I think this process is about uh, results um, in helping you guys support uh, your retail uh, recruitment strategy in a more sustainable um, and broad way. Part of our process will be understanding your goals. Uh, we don't do this in a vacuum. Uh, we want to understand uh, the comp plan, uh, your initiatives, uh, the vision and value uh, within these independent districts to help us outline uh, success. Uh, we spent a lot of time today already on the ground looking at existing conditions. Uh, staff gave us a whole uh, laundry list and a thumb drive full of information that we'll be working on uh, that they've provided us in terms of land use and zoning and uh, existing base files. Uh, and then we certainly want to catch up to your current efforts and spend time with staff making sure that uh, we're calibrated as well. Um, in terms of the retail trade area, uh, we we'll work on uh, pulling traffic counts, looking at customer, uh, customer patterns. Uh, we uh, spent time in the valley before. We understand uh, the relationship between the bridge and, and your retail success, so uh, we'll integrate that as well. Uh, we'll look at retail leakage and obviously competitive assessment, both internal and external. So we want to look at uh, how your existing shopping centers relate to one another, and then we obviously have to uh, relate your retail uh, district to um, other districts within the region. We're going to coalesce all this information in terms of a pitch book. What's the value proposition? Essentially, we want to make sure that we can articulate 
uh, why Brownsville to the rest of the market. Uh, so there's some examples of some work that, we, that we've done uh, that will also uh, spend some time uh, underscoring and, and making sure that we have a current inventory of available properties, uh, rather than be, you know, projects at Retail Solutions or uh, Wine Garden or some of the other uh, major firms are working on. We'll also work on a list of prospects um, that, um, in terms of that makes sense. Uh, we'll work on staff uh, uh, coordinating those properties and the prospects to make sure that we have a place to plug these in. Uh, and then uh, we'll work on ongoing recruit, uh, recruitment uh, with these tools. And then once we get started, uh, we'll be building uh, analogs, continuous engagement. Uh, you know, we can uh, certainly sponsor uh, <coughs> broker events, uh, developer tours, and then work on custom and any additional marketing and branding as needed to advance the sales cycles for uh, this process. Uh, in terms of schedule, uh, the first couple months we'll be spending uh, working through baseline data uh, and building the analogs. Uh, the remainder of that time we'll be build, building the reports. Um, we'll make sure that you're integrated in that process and then the back end would be uh, building the collateral and then ultimately recruitment. Um, this gives you an idea. So today we're working on the, the workshop um, in preparation for an ICSE meeting in May. Uh, there's also other regional events throughout the year. Um, our data comes out uh, actually this week. Uh, we'll do a refresher before the end of the year, uh, and then assuming that we're successful, we would continue that process again and then reset a schedule that makes sense for you uh, for next year. Uh, today, uh, we spent uh, quite a bit of time on the market. Uh, we spent some time meeting with uh, some of the major property owners and stakeholders already today. That I think it was very beneficial and informative. Um, we spent some time with staff. We're, we'll obviously spend more time as we're on the ground visiting with staff and. Uh, any of the leadership that wants to be involved, and then uh, we're here tonight to essentially uh, kick off this process. Um, in terms of goals, um, we understand that you, you know you've, your retail strategy has been in a flux, so we want to make sure that we underscore uh, retail strategy that makes sense. Uh, obviously, mitigate the leakage and expand your uh, tax base, uh, uh, both in terms of retail and entertainment uh, and other uses. Uh, we want to leverage existing market opportunities, uh, so you're not having to subsidize those. You know, we'll explain the sustainable value point of difference between your market and other opportunities. Uh, we want to work on and support your existing strategic initiatives. I think that's important. Um, and then we also want to align this with any other uh, efforts that you're working on. And then ultimately, uh, also support revitalization and activation of downtown, something that uh, uh, we think is important. We already talked about some, uh, some additional strategies and, and uh, initiatives that may be able to help that. Um, in terms of additional work, uh, hopefully our work can be plugged into your existing website uh, or any upgrades, uh, work on any branding elements. Uh, we want to certainly make sure that we have all the information in terms of key retail sites. Uh, we want to um, coordinate with you and your team um, in coordinating the, the owner uh, meetings and interviews. Um, we certainly want you to be available for any additional staff uh, questions. Uh, and then we've already been provided a number of, uh, of details and information, but uh, any additional information that you have would be helpful. And then uh, ultimately, we look forward to working with Helen and, and, uh, and your team um, and just in, throughout this process. So um, with that, I'll be more than happy to answer any questions. Uh, we uh, appreciate you having us here. Uh, we enjoy this process. There's a lot to do here, obviously, and uh, we look forward to getting to work um, as soon as you guys are ready. So thank you very much. So, well, thank you. Yes, I have a quick question. So in my eight years that I've been a city commissioner, the requests that I can't even tell you how many times a week people ask for it would be a Barnes and Nobles, a Checkers, um, a Delias Tamales. <laughs> so I feel like there's already a pretty big, broad spectrum. Our community knows what we want and we know what we're looking sure. for. So I think it would be very helpful if we could probably put a survey or like an opinion box on our city website so that every single person from the community can have input and tell us what it is that you're looking for, where you want to shop, what we can offer. Because let's say we have 2,000 people sign up and say they want a certain um, store to branch come. I think when you show that branch um, the, the demand in Brownsville, Texas, I think yep. that would be a lot more convincing than just our statistics and our numbers. So community Im input would be the number one um, tool that you could have. We've got a number of survey formats. We'll be more than happy to pro provide those to you so we can help you jumpstart that process if that's something that you're interested in. Uh, you know, qualitative information is certainly valuable, and then we can help you qualify the quantitative side to make a good argument and case for those that make sense. So thank you. Thank you. I have some questions. Um, are, are, is this retail recruitment that are big box stores, or are you also recruiting small business types of owners? 
So our current database contains, uh, contains over 4,000 retailers uh, that can help reinforce them all. Uh, it does include entertainment, it does include hospitality, it does include a number of national tenants, but we also focus on those smaller niche uh, and destination-oriented tenants. Uh, we think about sort of each sub-area as a special district, and we want to create a nuanced merchant stri merchandising strategy for that district, and so that can include some big box, some national, and some local. Um, obviously, for downtown, that may make, sort of make sense to bring in more destination tenants and local and niche um, to create you know, more, more vibrancy. Uh, and then maybe along the corridors may make sense for more national tenants, but uh, we cover the spectrum and the gamut and really think about it in a nuanced way depending on what's appropriate. And then and, uh, my second question is, do you, uh, along with evaluating current buying practices or whatever it is that you just said um, before in your presentation, do you also look at emerging markets? Are you looking at um, what is in the pipeline for Brownsville in terms of some of our plans that we are acting on now that may not actually be up and running yet, but are in the process? Absolutely. This is a fluid process, um, and your market's changing on a daily basis. We've already, already visited with uh, some of those development uh, opportunities. Um, so we want to think both short range, um, you know, what can we get accomplished in the next, you know, 30, 60, 90 days, and, and, and then we also want to understand what's accretive in the long run. And so, yes, we'll, we'll <coughs> hopefully – uh, jumpstart some projects, but um, will certainly help reinforce uh, some of those greenfield sites that you have in your planning stages today. And my last question is, you, you mentioned very quickly um, traffic counts. Um, are you also layering in our trail locations? For instance, the Katy Trail in Dallas does have an, a very, very rich economic impact in terms of retail and, and restaurants and entertainment along it, and that's just one of many, many examples. So. Are you looking at where our trails are located? And because that's important. I live on the Katy Trail, so I appreciate that. Uh, come visit us, come hang out with us. Um, we did not include any pedestrian counts in this initiative, um, but if that's something that we need to consider, there are places where that is valuable. We think about um, everything in terms of wallet share, and if there's a place for us to capture wallets and we need to understand that, we'll make sure that we integrated that in the process. Then I would suggest that city yeah. staff yeah. give you that information. Yeah. Thank um, you very much for that input. One more thing, just while I have you here, the number one request that I have is entertainment and a safe place for our young adults to visit. So I would ask that you possibly prioritize that. Our younger generations, um, you know, they go to the movies and out to eat, and I would like to see that the city of Brownsville offer more to them. We talked a lot uh, today uh, about uh, entertainment strategy, and I think there's certainly some places that have a uh, predominant amount of retail that could be evolved to include entertainment, um, and I think that certainly is low-hanging fruit to expand the, the options for that, so we will certainly focus on that as well. Thank you. Thank you. Very good. Thank you, everybody. Thank you. Mayor, thank Appreciate you. It. Appreciate it. The next presentation is Brownsville Community Improvement Corporation, the BCIC quarterly report. Good evening, Mayor and Commission. Uh, as you all might know by now, BCIC is currently undergoing a transitional period to be able to find a permanent uh, position for the executive director of the organization. However, one of the main goals that the board of directors and staff placed upon uh, once this transition began was to ensure that we did not lose that momentum and we kept on, if not accelerating or keeping that same pace. And with that being said, um, I am going to point on, on a few uh, strategic endeavors that we're working on right now. First and foremost is our big program, which is short for the Business Improvement and Growth uh, Program. We did launch this in March. Uh, we're setting aside, this is a pilot program, we're setting aside $200,000 each year for the next three years, a total of $600,000 to be able to incentivize uh, property owners and business owners to be able to begin revitalizing some of the property that's in downtown. Uh, we did set aside a, a, a metric. We also drew a line on a map to be able to be as strategic and effective on these uh, funds. Uh, as of today, we did receive a total of 12 applications, 11 of them being for capital improvements, one of them being for rent subsidy. And we're hoping that each year, if not a little bit more routinely, we take those $200,000 and, and double that in capital investment, mixing the public funds and the private investment funds uh, with that as well. So we're very confident moving forward that we'll begin seeing a lot of the development happen 
or at least being accelerated here in downtown. Uh, most of these applicants that we just received are for the Washington Street corridor. So we're looking forward to seeing the end product at that point. Uh, the next is the eBridge Center project, which is formerly known as the Center for Business and Innovation Project. Uh, we shifted our gears a little bit uh, in terms of the original timeline that I proposed here a few, a few months ago. We had to accelerate the EDA application process to be able to ensure that we had a full application submitted on time based on the advice that we received from the Lower Rio Grande Valley Development Council. Uh, it is my pleasure to announce that the full application has been submitted. Uh, it goes without noting that the uh, city management office uh, set aside a very, very competent and supportive team to be able to address this, uh, this challenge that we had to be able to submit this application in full and as soon as possible. So moving forward from the EDA application, we're now working closely to ensure that all our legal documentation is set place so that we can go ahead and present that to you all soon. We're working with the memorandum of understanding between all key partners for this project, as well as the lease agreement and sublease agreements that we will have. And in conjunction to this, we're also working with the RFQ for the engineering and architectural services that will be used and provided for the uh, building we selected, which is formerly actually known as the Castle of Nylon uh, building. Aside from these two big, big projects that we're working on, we also have what we've done before routinely, which is the capital projects. Uh, the capital project cycle just closed a few months ago. We received a total of three applications, all of them which are going to be totaling up to 400000 So we'll be bringing this forth on the uh, next board meeting so that we can go ahead and review after our legal has vetted through the applicants uh, to be able to select uh, the next capital projects that we'll have in our community. Aside from capital projects, we're also working with land development. We, as an organization, own some land over by the sports park. So we're going to begin doing our, our due diligence to prepare that land so that we can define what's unused and what's currently already developed as part of our prior agreements uh, so that we can begin contemplating as to what to use that land for. Now, we, we can't dream big and think about what we're going to have on that land without doing all this preliminary work first. So that's another endeavor that we've tagged along for the, uh, the Brownsville Community Improvement Corporation. And last and foremost, we've started building on a stronger collaboration between the city and the economic development organizations that we wouldn't necessarily see before. And, and I'm very proud to be able to say that we're working closely with city management office and a lot of the new and upcoming special projects that fall along the lines of economic development, one of which of the endeavors you just heard of with our colleague Jason in terms of retail development. So we're, we're doing this collaboration and we're, we're spurring a lot of community development in terms of economic development to ensure that we cover the full spectrum of what we can do to add to the competitiveness of our community. So, that being said, I wanted to just conclude this very brief and short quarterly report in hopes that by the next quarter I provide you with a much more detailed presentation with a lot of these uh, projects and endeavors capitalized on with a lot more solid numbers to provide you all with. But uh, at this point, uh, that concludes my quarterly report and I'll be willing to entertain any questions you all might have. Thank you. Thank you very Thank much, you all. Josh. Appreciate it. Next, we have consent agenda items A through R. Would you approve? Second. Second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Anyone opposed? Motion carries. Next, we have the public comment period. Um, we did not have anybody to sign up for the co public comment, so okay. we can go on to the next agenda item. We'll do adjourn. Second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. Aye. Thank you all for being Thank here. You.